what's going on everybody welcome it's another live episode q a whistle kick martial arts radio is 13 13 lucky number 13 sure if you are numer- well but today is two 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 so like numerically like maybe it maybe it's tuesday out. it is i yeah. invented that look it's us hey it's us with a slight delay hey, uh, hey, the number 13 is actually uh a a good number in Judaism. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Stacy, we are having a great Tuesday. So we are having a great Tuesday. Uh, so what are we doing? We're doing a bunch of stuff. Today yeah. Because these are Q and A episodes. These are fun. Yeah. We got we got some stuff. We got a we got a new product to show. Hey, I we positioned that like perfectly out of sight. I know. Brilliant. That is pretty good. Did we try to do that? No. Okay. So that would have required things. Think, we had that. other stuff we were thinking of. Yeah. Welcome to the most organic thing that we do. Truly. Yeah. Yeah. And which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. No, 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 no. no. If you are watching or listening later, we have no way for you to know yet when we do these. It's catch as catch can. Oh, I see. He's there. Cool. Yeah. Um, Intro stuff. Yeah. Q&A. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching or listening whistlekick.com slash family all the ways you can help us patreon.com slash whistlekick exclusive behind the scenes stuff you throw us a little bit of money podcast one five buy stuff at whistlekick.com save 15 percent. help out the show uh whistlekick.com for all the things that we do whistlekick martial arts radio for everything that is this show our social media at whistlekick jeremy whistlekick.com andrew at whistlekick martial arts radio you hit them all I think that was good. The water for my tea wasn't warm enough. It's, it's just kind of, this is also like the third cup on this tea bag. <laughs> We've been recording all morning and I just keep throwing more hot water on the tea bag. But all right. So uh, I have a bunch of questions. Okay. On my phone. Uh, really? For a QA episode? I know. Crazy. Uh, I also, for you guys that are watching live, um, I'm I also am balancing my, my iPad here so I can see the questions that people comment so if you have something you want to say like feel free like oh I, score i can see it right here that's why i did this oh then should i no i don't think we need to do that i was going to say should we enlarge that over there but i don't think we need to whatever whatever you want i can i can see here no, it's all good i'm okay. trying not to watch that because the delay throws me off yeah yeah i'm only looking at for questions all right so uh the first and we have a special guest coming in a special later. guest yeah we're, we're, we're just in a little, in a little bit uh, so the first question comes from uh, Matt and Jenny Nathan. Hi, Matt and Jenny. Don't, is don't this... say, say there. Hi, Matt and Jenny. Is this an appropriate question? Yes, I, I know the two of them. Yeah, um, they would like you to talk about. So this isn't so much a question as much as they just want to hear your thoughts on your most memorable belt test and why. My blue belt. Your blue belt test. See, I'm willing to bet most people listening and watching would have thought it would have been one of your black belt tests, but your blue belt test. Okay. And and, and maybe I'm taking a little bit of liberty with the term memorable because mm-hmm. everyone expects their black belt test to be memorable. Mm-hmm. And it is, and it should be. It should be a powerful experience. And mine was. It was life-changing. Um, but the only other test I really remember from my original martial arts journey in karate with my original instructors is my blue belt test. So um, I started training really young. And one of the things we had to do for our yell belt test was hold a horse stance for a half hour. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, for a yell belt. This This is the early 80s, man. Like, it was real. And I was so young. I was six. That they're like, all right, just 15 minutes. Ask a six-year-old to hold a position for 15 minutes, right? Like, um, I I was old enough to recognize I was being given an exception. Mm -hmm. But when I was eight and I tested for blue belt, I was not given an exception for the hour-long horse stance. Wow. Yeah. I remember being in the back of the room, facing the wall. And, you know, inevitably what's going to happen, right? 
it is a constant process while class is going on, which thankfully that was happening because it gave me something to try to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And I remember Sensei Bath coming over like every five minutes, pushing me down, pushing me down, mm -hmm. pushing me down, right? The expectation, this is not like the best horse stance you've ever seen. Yeah. Nobody's holding that for an hour. But you couldn't just kind of stand there. Although, let's be real, just standing there for an hour is actually kind of hard if your feet are wide enough. That yeah. is a horse stance. Um, what's that meme? Complaining about horse stance sounds like someone needs more horse, horse stance. stance. That guy? Yeah. yeah, that's a great meme. And I remember, I don't remember what happened before, but I remember there were two of us. And I remember her coming over. I knew class was ending and coming because class was an hour and her like touching me and saying, okay, you can get up now. And I fell over backwards. I could not stand. I tried to stand. I fell over, smacked on the ground and just like, that doesn't hurt as much. I'll just lay here. <laughs> and then we went and did a self-defense seminar at a church. Wow. Was the floor at least matted? Did you fall and hit your head on a matted floor? No, it was a, it was a hard hard hardwood, hardwood gym floor. Ouch. Yeah. Um, my legs barely worked. I remember kicking and just like... <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's an element there where, you know, we're talking 34 years ago. I remember the emotion and the discomfort, the frustration really vivid mm, interesting yeah yeah wow good question not the uh not the answer that i think anyone would have anticipated which is great that's good i do my best yeah it's good to get these kind of behind the scenes sort of like thoughts and how you think of things um because you know we talk about it on the show all the time that you know we we do things and they're kind of similar, but they're sometimes just hearing different person's viewpoint on things yeah. is really great to hear. Um, one way that people can get more insight into how you think of things is to join the Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. Um, did you look at what I put up yesterday? I did actually. Okay. What did you think? So it was really, it was interesting because it had to do with a seminar that you taught. It came out of this weekend. Uh, that, at my school. Yeah. Uh, and so it was re It was very interesting to see your thought process. Mm. Yeah, was good. So this past weekend, Andrew hosted an event, invited me to teach. I was, you know, I'm thankful. I appreciate it. And I talked about this on First Cup a little bit, that I very quickly had to retool what I was going to teach. And I've heard feedback from people over the years Jeremy, where do you come up with these drills? How do you, and then I tell them, you know, I come up with them on the fly. How do you do that? How do you adjust on the fly? How do you learn to do this? Because I don't, when I teach, I, the, the seminar that I'm doing now, I laid out what was going to happen in the Phoenix Rising seminar, mm -hmm. but now I don't need the notes, right? Yeah. Like just making the notes is all I really needed to organize my thoughts. But when I'm teaching otherwise, I still don't really come up with notes. It's just what's in front of me. So I laid out the process that I use, which is actually a pretty simple process yep. to constantly present a thing, have them go through the thing, revise the thing. And I laid out, we, I did a video of it where you get to see my hands all over the place. I did an audio version and I even did a simplified text version, depending on the tiers people were in that hopefully it gives people some insight, not only into my thought process, but how others may learn from that and what they may do and you know i don't pretend everybody does it exactly the same and i mm. definitely don't believe that there's a right way but i'm going to guess most people are somewhat similar and i'm really interested to see how people react and respond to that so that's a good example of the stuff that goes in patreon you know it's it's everything from educational content to what's going on behind the scenes to actual drills that usually come out of my own training and I like doing that because I know that the Patreon group is full of people who really like what we do. So I can lean in harder on the things that I know make us different, knowing yeah. that it's going to be received. And and they're often like-minded. Like they, they, yeah. they're, they're contributing financially to the growth of the show. Mm -hmm. um, 
because they believe in the mission and they believe what we do is good uh, and is you know, bringing martial arts education in the right direction. And so by being a part of that, they get a, even more education by stepping in your mind to some degree. And, you know, mm-hmm. just so, a little bit sometimes into mine as well. I've, mm-hmm. I've, I've been in, in some of them and, yep. you know, and likely will again. Yep. Uh, and so it's, it's neat to be able to help contribute in that way. And of course, if anybody wants to join Patreon, you can always cancel. There's no commitment. You can always bump up or bump down your pledge. You know, we're just thankful for the support in whatever way you're willing and able to give it. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. Uh, if you want a direct link, uh, there's one at whistlekick.com. Whistlekick.com slash family. It's on that list too. Awesome. All right. So we have another question. Yeah. You can bring him on now. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to bring on our guest. I'll let you do it. All right. So I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to hopefully do this. I'm going to be a diva. I'm going to do this right. uh, Hopefully. Just going to hang out. Add to stream. I click that button. (coughs) Hopefully we do this right. Hey, we did it. Look at that. Oh, you need to move over. You need to move over. Uh, 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 Oh, there we go. This feels so out of center. I don't like it. It's so weird. It's very weird. Cheers. What's Cheers. Nice How are you, Stephen? Uh, how's that? <laughs> oh, you're fine. It's just the fact that the hello, hello. The camera, I'm still on my first cup with Jeremy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stephen, you uh, you answered That's great. the call. You answered the call and said uh, you'd be willing to come on and ask a question. Thank you. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, my one request is that it's a, a family-friendly question because I don't know the question you can ask. I have no idea. Question. That's a lot of trust. Oh, let me let me let me let me just scroll down to. Oh man, family-friendly. You say okay. Hang on. Wait. I, probably at the end here. I have one. <laughs> well, I I had a question in mind, but then I saw the um, the uh, heavy bag behind you. So I changed my question to, uh, can you please demonstrate a triple sidekick with a half flip? Uh, you know. Uh... <laughs> well, because a half flip would hurt. A half flip would involve me landing on my head. Not if you started on your hands. Uh... Yeah, well, that's just my, that's my gift to you. <laughs> so I, I, my shoulder has a bit of a thing from me learning front handsprings years ago. Uh. Um, handsprings, I, I here's a fun here's a fun thing for all of you. Uh, recognize that just because you develop flexibility through a range of motion does not mean you have strength through that range of motion. Yeah, and just because you have strength doesn't mean you have endurance. Right. For sure. Yeah, yeah that's that's a yes. challenge they are doing uh, Do handsprings just, and you know, cups with people challenge the shoulders and hips. Right. Uh, did you yeah. have an actual question? <laughs> you ready? Yeah. You ready for the question? I'm ready. Bring yeah. It. Uh, so one thing that I, I noticed that uh, probably any good teacher does is that they, they get reinforcement from their students um, on things that they already know or, uh, you know, things that they're challenging their students to do, they challenge themselves to do. And so they might deepen or broaden their understanding of something because it's reflected in the students and the students' questions and behaviors. But my question is, thinking back on your career, what concept or idea or principle have you learned wholly from a student? Something that was just entirely new to you. Like, I'm glad they're teaching me. (laughs) Good question, Stephen. I find it's a helpful question to give teachers because it reminds them that, you know, it's a two-way street teaching, you know. You want me to still stay where you Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, we, we can still do the triple sidekick with a half flip. That's, you, can, you can fall the triple back on that. Easy. The easy. I'm thinking about sidekick. <laughs> question. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Stephen, I would agree with you while he's formulating here, by the way, I am taking yeah. time off this, this no, whole time. I know. Um, but it is often said that, you know, you as a teacher learn from your students. And I think that's kind of what you're getting at, right? What, what is it that the instructor, in this case, Jeremy, has learned from his students? Um, yes. And I have to imagine this will be a little challenging for Jeremy because 
I know you had a school for a little while, but I, my understanding is well, it was not a school with hundreds of students. So you, it's not like you had a lot. And it was also, I closed it 20 years ago. Right, right. Yeah. So, okay. So I, I've got it. Um, Great. Now, now, you may not know, Stephen, I don't know how many of the listeners, viewers know that over the last decade or so, most of my teaching has not been martial arts. It's been in the gymnastics, fitness, parkour space, but it's still movement, right? It's movement without the goal of, of you know, hitting someone in the face, right? It's, it's movement, but it's a different kind of movement. And so I kind of started there. What did I learn from, from them that has spanned all of the teaching I've done? And it really comes out of a, it's been a, a sh dramatic shift in how I, viewed them doing things differently than what I intended. And anybody who teaches kids knows this, yep. that you give kids a set of parameters, like do this thing. And inevitably, probably every class, at least one kid's going to do one thing that you had no idea worked within the parameters you gave them. Like what? That's not at all what I meant. Right. And so when you're a new instructor, you get bent out of shape about that. And you're like, oh man, you know, okay. So you spend the rest of the class and you're being hyper explicit and you're giving mm. them all the ways to not do the thing. I want you to do this thing, but I don't want you to do burp, 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 burp. And that's how I was early on. And, and honestly, in some contexts, I, I, I think I still am that way. But as I have grown as an instructor, and a lot of that has to do with the thoughtfulness that's come from doing this show, I've started to recognize that people doing things differently not only is okay, but is often an asset because it shows me something. It shows me either my limited thinking, uh, it shows me creativity. It may be a better way of doing it. I've had examples where I've asked students, okay, do this thing, and they all go and they do something differently. Now, why are they all doing it differently? It could be because my instructions suck. Mm -hmm. It could also be because it's telling me something about how they look at their training. Now, maybe where they are and where I'm trying to get them, there's a bigger gap than I expected and we need a midpoint. And so I have them do it the way that they're doing it. And yeah. then, keep yeah, talk, just keep talking. Yeah. And then I have to get them down the pipe with something else and that's okay right so i think it's it's you could lump it in under the heading of humility that my methodology for instruction is not always right quote unquote or best or whatever and it, it's did you say give and take Stephen, in, in your preface, or did I just kind of internalize that? Because that's how I see it. There's a give and take relationship between student and instructor. I, no, I didn't say give and take, but I think it's implicit in the idea, the, yeah. the, 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 two, the two way street of it. Yeah. Yeah. As, as I make students better, as any instructor makes their students better, in order to remain as the instructor, there's an unstated, un, there's an unspoken element of you have to get better yourself. So as they get better, you get better so they can get better. So you can get better. Five minutes. Steven, does that answer your question? Excellent. All right. So good. That was a good job. Uh, thank you for jumping in. Great to join okay. in. Okay. All right. Come thank on. you, Steven. Have a great day. Uh, I'm wearing slippers. Yeah, that was that was a good one. That was that was that good. was different. I like that. And as we all saw, it made me think. I didn't just have a quick answer. Yeah, and I, I like to think. I like when you all make me think. It's valuable to me. And and conversely, we like we like when we make you think. You know, so. um, and you know, sometimes we really appreciate when you think uh, when you hear an episode and you think it makes you think. Let us know. Like, let yeah. us. We we like to know that. It's a good thing. Um, and one of the best feedbacks you can give to us is to leave us a review. Such a great transition. 
I listen to a lot of freaking you are podcasts. You killing this, man. I listen to a lot Andrew, of podcasts. the master of transitions. So, so I hear transitions a lot. All right. <laughs> so as you may know from recent Q&As, here's what we're doing. We're going through, we're picking a recent review from Facebook, Google, and Apple Podcasts. We're pulling those reviews, reading them on the air, and then those people email me, and I send them a, a coupon code for a gift certificate at whistlecake.com that they can use on just about anything. And I say just about because like All In Weekend is not discountable. But that's the only thing on there right now. Do you need a discount for All In Weekend? It's no. so cheap. It's so inexpensive. It's kind of insane. But um, So the three of you, when you hear this, email me and yeah, and I'll send you your code. And the fourth place, um, especially for those of you who've been around a while and left reviews, Spotify. There's no review, but ratings. Last I looked, we were killing it on the Spotify ratings and we've seen a small increase in downloads and I chalk it up to that. So please, thank you. So let me read these. All right, so coming out of the Facebook reviews, Ray, Mason, we love the podcast. First Cup is a great way to wake up and start the day. We enjoy the topics and find that we talk as family about things that were said and how these topics relate for our days on the mm -hmm. way to work and school. It makes for a great start of the day and really positive feelings. That means the world. That's day. awesome. The fact that it gets you talking as a family, I couldn't ask for anything more seriously. Like it, I mean, it gets them to think, which yeah. is, you know, it's awesome. awesome. Okay. Coming from Google, Daniel Eagles. Whistlecake has many strings to their bow. A twice weekly podcast, a daily live show, free training days, seminars, books, good quality gear and apparel. I've probably forgotten loads of stuff, but the one thing it all has in common is it is of the highest quality. If you're reading this, check out an episode of the podcast. I can guarantee you won't regret it. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Awesome. And from J.S. Blum, who I'm assuming is Josh Blum, but I maybe so. not. Yeah. Coming out of Apple Podcasts. Great way to find a community in the martial arts. This is long, so I'm going to read it fast. One of the weird things about training in the martial arts is that because there are so many, the chances of meeting another martial arts in the same style and who shares the same practice as you do that didn't go to your school or have the same instructor can sometimes be challenging, especially in some parts of the world and with less mainstream styles. Plus, there can be a lot of petty, unnecessary squabbling between styles that divides rather than unites us. Those of you who remember the Style Wars in the early 90s when UFC was just beginning may well remember one public example. In some ways, little has changed. All this is ironic, since when it comes to the general public, we're pretty much all the same. So the great thing about this show and Whistlekick as an entity in general, is that there is something for everyone as their mission is to unite rather than divide, question rather than grandfather in, respect tradition, but not be bound by it. I have listened to the show for years, not just for the quality of the topics and diversity of the guests, but for myriad ways in which it has provided food for thought and ways to think about and enhance my own practice. Give it a listen. You will find a whole community waiting for you. Thank you, JS Blum, presume Josh. All of you, Email me, Jeremy, at whistlekick.com. I will send you your code. So two of them talking about thoughtfulness, mm -hmm. thinking, mm -hmm. and, you know, I really appreciate it because that's, that's the goal, right? Yeah. You've said from day one, this is not about my way or the way or right way. It's about getting you to think. I would rather, honestly, have someone listen to the show and disagree with everything I say after contemplating it mm -hmm. then blindly agree yeah and js blum mentioned at the end there the community aspect and I, I think that's a big part of it and i think it is becoming easy um yeah somewhat easier for us to have that community aspect through uh community these feeling. through these live episodes that we're yeah. doing um through the free training day which which admittedly you know majority of which gets the northeast although yep. that's we're, expanding we're, we're working we're um working to you know, that. all in weekend as well as bringing mm -hmm. people from all over um but that community aspect shouldn't be overlooked i think you know we are becoming a, a space that people can be a part of and that's what i wanted from day one mm -hmm. right like i was so sick of the exclusion and the oh oh you did uh, you do the yeah and i just i didn't get it and i still don't get it i mean that's not true i understand where it comes from i just think it's dumb yeah there's no need for it so that's why we work hard to do things like i i try to make sure that my language is style agnostic i try even though i may do 
what I learned as a kata out of an Okinawan martial art, and it is a kata, I was still in the context of whistle kick going to talk about it as a form in most cases mm -hmm. because I don't want people to feel excluded. I want people to recognize that we are all here to support each other. And when things pop up, because as we're growing, there are things, there are elements that start to filter in that like a lot of what we do, but maybe they don't have that full style agnostic bent to them mm -hmm. and they're willing to push back on certain things. I let them know point blank. We don't do that here. Yeah. This is not okay. You can either adapt, remain silent on that part or go away. I'm not explicitly going to kick you out unless you violate the terms, which, you know, are pretty simple. It's, it's about respect. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for your next question? After I remind everyone that leaving reviews on Apple, Facebook, and Google is, let's face it, the odds are in your favor for a gift certificate next month. So mm -hmm. go ahead, do it up. And it costs nothing to do. Just a little bit of time. That's it. All right, so this next question comes from Chris Rickard. Hey, Chris. Uh, and it's interesting that last question kind of tied into you as an instructor with, mm -hmm. from your students. And his, Chris's question is, what lessons learned from your first time running a martial arts school most it would most influence uh, you creating a school in the future? Mm -hmm. Which I, I think I'm starting to talk about this publicly. We're, we're scouting, and not, and not we, because this is not a whistle kick endeavor. Uh, though it will be a lot of the same spirit. Uh, I, I'm scouting locations for a school, and I say I, but it, it, there's I, okay. I found some of the partners. Because I did I did purposely reword the question a bit yeah, in case you weren't it's, gonna. It's say. fine. It's fine. Uh, I would actually guess by the time this comes out, we will probably have a space. Okay. So the, the direct question was, what lessons learned from your time running a martial arts school? most influence your current school plans? Mm. When I think back on what I did right and wrong back then, what I did right is it was fun and I was willing to challenge convention. Uh, so even this was bef long before my exposure, even knowledge that CrossFit was a thing. Mm -hmm. I was attempting to test things in an objective way. Mm. Okay. One of the things that we don't do very much of in martial arts. So that that's probably a great example of my willingness to just do things differently. Um, and much of what's going on right now is going to be different. It's going to be dramatically different. Not in, no, well, I, I won't get into how. Just know it's going to be different. So my my recognition that I did some things that were quite different back then and they were good gives me confidence to try things and be different this go around as well. Uh, while I had the, let's say the academic knowledge mm -hmm. to teach a school at 22, I did not have the maturity because, and, and here, here's why I say that. How often are martial arts instructors given challenging situations? challenging students or over time the request, sometimes expectation of guiding their students' lives through difficult challenges, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a, there's a, a, a just the, the, the teacher student relationship breeds that. And, you know, people coming to me at 23, 20, school was shut down before I was 24 talking about divorce and challenges with their children and all these things. And I'm like, uh, I'm a kid still like I'm a really big kid. And, you know, theoretically I'm an adult, but you know, now I'm still a kid, but I'm a much older kid and yeah. I, I'm able to play an adult <laughs> when necessary. So I think that part's going to go a lot better. I'm also better at understanding and drawing boundaries and, and, and all these things. So does that, does that answer the question? Yeah. I mean, so, if I can paraphrase Please. what you're saying is one of the biggest things you learned is how to better maintain those, the difference in relationships from being a teacher now. I didn't learn that then, mm -hmm. but I know that now. Yeah. So that's what his, that's his question is, what did you learn then that will most influence what you're doing now? That's it. What I, what I learned then was it's okay to, to um, stir the pot. 
it's okay to shake things up. It's okay to do things differently. It's okay to break with tradition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that was good. Thanks. And he answered it in like two and a half minutes. And as always, if, you know, especially for Chris, if I, you know, if that wasn't quite the angle you wanted, if you want more deeper, whatever, you know, I, I'm about as public as you get. And I'd rather you didn't show up on the doorstep, but you're welcome to email me mm-hmm. at any time. Excellent. Um, why don't we talk about uh, this cool thing we have sitting <laughs> in front of us that no one can see except us. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. It's Jeff Grayley, who, let's see. Who? So you're the second person to see it other than myself and the designer and the people who put it together. Oh, who's the first person to see it? Am I not allowed to know? Oh, work. I told you. Oh, oh gotcha. Yeah. New gear bags. Look at that. That's so freaking cool. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, Dennis just joined. Just joined the chat. What's up, Dennis? Uh, many of you know that we try to make cool stuff, and we've been getting better making cooler stuff. And this is one of the cooler things that we're doing. So, uh, this was ordered in as a sample. I put together the design with. The designer we've been working with who mm-hmm. is a, a, a really really nice gentleman who's getting married um, he's not i wouldn't call him part of our community but we're, we're pulling him in he doesn't train but he makes cool stuff and we've got a good hive mind thing going on and i saw that this was an option that we could make from scratch yeah duffels at this point now the first thing i'm going to let people know in, in in my lexicon we have three tiers of product we have value product Mm -hmm. which like we have one t-shirt in the essentials collection that with the free shipping and everything it's still under 20 bucks before any discounts yeah that's a value product it's a it's it is not the most comfortable shirt we offer it's a simple thing okay Mm -hmm. we have mid-level product which is something that you're going to look at and go yeah that's okay you know it's 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 a good value okay and then we have what i call premium product which you're going to look at and say I really like it, you're probably going to hesitate a little bit when you see the price. Mm -hmm. The dragon hoodies we did were a great example of that. One of our best selling, if not our best, probably our second best selling item of all time on the apparel side, Mm -hmm. because it was really cool. And while everybody didn't buy one, everybody liked them. Oh yeah. Absolutely. So we're, we try to mix it up. I would say this falls into the premium side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not going to give you a price only because it is entirely possible. The price shifts a little bit. It is up at whistlekick.com right now. So you'll go, you will see, and we'll go, yeah. Okay. Now it's not out of line of what people would spend for a nice duffel. The reason you buy this is because it's a cool duffel, not because it's the best quality duffel on earth. The, it's not bad quality. The top is cool too. You like the dragon hoodies? I don't, I don't, we don't know how well this will show up on the camera, but. If you like the dragon hoodies, you'll like the design on the top. So there's the dragon, and we tuck the dragon there, right? And we've got some blue flames going on there, and the logo's big on the bottom. And I don't know if this is going to show up at it's all. It's not. We're going to try. So if you look really closely, if I get the contrast right, there are very subtle whistle kick logos throughout here, kind of in the way that you would see like on a yeah. handbag. It didn't, we it didn't come through. I can tell not. I'm looking. Yeah. Uh, it's a bummer. That's well, great. it's there. Trust me. It's there. Um, one big pocket mesh on the outside, uh, padded carry handle, padded shoulder strap. My old duffel did not have that. It drove me nuts. And then inside, uh, you've got two pockets. You've got this zippy one right here and you've got this one right here. Okay, Dennis says he's in desperate need of a of a gear bag. <laughs> Elizabeth, yes, dragon gear bag. <laughs> the dragon gear bag can hold, I don't know, probably 10 dragon hoodies. Oh, for sure. You know what? They should find out. How would they find out? They would buy 10 dragon They hoodies. would ask Craig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I say that only because um, Craig loved the dragon hoodies so much, and I'm sure he won't mind me saying this. He bought one of each color. We made five. He bought five. And I've joked with him. I'm going to make other colors. Just because I know I'll sell one to him. He's he's joked that he can use one to teach every day of the week. He can. Yeah. He can. Yeah. Uh, The dragon design is is 
I wanted to do like a 2022 kind of like thread through the year on mm -hmm. some of the apparel and that dragon is kind of it. It's not yeah. year of the dragon, but yeah, for yeah. us, it's kind of year of the dragon. We're yeah, not going to, we're not going to call it that, but Stacy likes that it's blue. All the, all of the gear bags in her school are typically red. So a little there different. You go. That's nice. Blue. And and it's decent. Like if, if you know anything about this stuff, like it's YKK zippers. Um, it, it's it's put together well. Again, you're not going to want to put bricks in it and carry it around. I don't think it's going to hold up to that. Versus, you know, there there are tactical duffel bags that are designed to carry like really heavy. Yeah, yeah. that's not what this is. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, all right. So we have one more question. Okay. Let's do it today. Uh, and this, let me scroll here. There is it. Uh, okay. This one comes from Jonathan Kenny. Okay, it was on our last episode. What's up, Bye. Jonathan Kenny? Yep. Uh, and this is kind of a fun one. You might not know the You're answer. You're smiling and I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I get nervous when you smile. Um, so you might not know the answer to, but but you could see, maybe you can make a guess to. Uh, you could Google it. Uh, and you've got a Google here, so you can be like, hey, me. <laughs> Where did it be? Okay. But we're gonna we're gonna chastise him if he does that. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Where did the many pronunciations of jujitsu, jujitsu, etc., come from, and which one is right? So the place that my mind first goes is the fact that uh, it's a different character set in a different language, and if I remember correctly, the term for that conversion is transliteration mm -hmm. okay and my understanding is that transliteration is never quite exact and the example that comes to mind is hanukkah sure. hanukkah in hebrew has a little bit of a in it and so when i see hanukkah written without a ch mm -hmm. to me that's wrong but it's really irrelevant to argue over because Hanukkah uses Hebrew letters, not the alphabet that we use. Not the Anglo-Saxon alphabet we use. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So my theory is that, mm -hmm. that it's that. And like the same re Kempo and Kenpo, right? Mm -hmm. With an M or an N. Right. And... You know, my assumption, I've not spent the time to research this because I've had other things that were more important. But sometimes when I think about that, I'm like, oh, I bet the actual pronunciation from people who speak the language that we derive it from, it's somewhere between an M and an N. It's kind of, you know, a hybrid sound. Yeah. And people hear And they're so things. close. It's like yeah. M is in Mansi. You know? Yeah. So Jew versus Jew versus Jiu Jitsu, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that's, that's what I'm going to say. Okay. What do you think is supposed to be the right spelling? Do you know? I think it's irrelevant because it's English. Yeah. And it's that, that would be my answer too. Like for me, I'm, I typically see it as J I U mm -hmm. U. And then I typically see it as either Jitsu J I T S U or, or J U J or Jitsu J U. Right. Um, I have come to find that BJJ Brazilian jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. is generally spelled differently than Japanese jiu-jitsu. Interesting. And I wonder if there's something to that, given that it's from Brazil. And again, tr you know, we've all played the telephone game, right? Mm -hmm. Where you say one thing and it goes down the line. I mean, the same can be done of this spelling, right? Right. And then, you know, you've got, if it's Brazil, you've got Portuguese involved in the, in mm -hmm. the way that they instinctively sound things out, right? Like, so... Academically, this is interesting to me. Yeah. Functionally, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. Yeah. But that's okay because I spend a fair amount of time looking at things academically that really have no bearing in the world. And that's okay. So, do we get a right answer? The right answer is you spell it the way you want it. Is that really, is that what he said? No. Oh, was he, he testing me? No, he, he didn't know. I'm, oh, guess, okay. I'm guessing he asked because he didn't know. Okay. Well, I, okay. Yeah. I, I assume so. I don't know. Does. He's not here. It's hopefully he'll point. hopefully he'll listen and watch and can tell us now i will all but guarantee that there are people out there who have strong opinions on this subject could be i am i want to hear from you given one condition 
you can back it up logically in a way that accepts or realistically refutes my comment about moving from Japanese characters over mm -hmm. to, let's call it English. And so that you do it in a respectful way. Yeah, that goes without saying. I, yeah. I doubt there are too many people who listen or watch this deep into a show and That's are fair. respectful. Most That's of the fair. disrespectful comments we get are from the titles. People that don't actually watch they it. They don't actually. Yeah, like, remember the one? You, um, you know the one I'm talking about. I do. And it was like, you asked three or four times. Did and, you watch the and episode? they clearly had not. Yeah. Yep. All right. Those are, uh, that's our Q&A episode. Do we have any other cues? No. 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 None have uh, been coming through. Awesome. Well, uh, that bags up at whistlekick.com. Um, there are other new things up there. There are a couple things that will debut for next month's Q and A on the show. Remind me, that's a thing we got to we got to do. Like I'm getting better about that. Mm -hmm. The January item was the new colors of the dragon hoodie. Yep. February was the new essentials tee, which yep. I think I wore on that you last did. time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the March item is actually a pair of shorts, which has not gone live yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I will probably show those. Actually, I did show them on first cup once. If you guys want to know, like. The reality of what's going on at Whistlekick, like all the behind the scenes. Two things you can do. Jeremy's really tired. It's First Cop and it's Patreon. Yeah, those two things. Yeah, First Cop is where I'm like, oh, hey, there's a there's a pair of shorts on the floor. You, you can buy those in a few weeks. Coffee. <laughs> That's really what happens. If you have questions for next month's episode, I like doing these shows. I know you enjoy doing them. Mm -hmm. Hopefully all of you enjoy watching or listening to them. Email Andrew, Andrew at whistlekickmarshwartsradio.com. I don't want to be involved because then it's less fun. Yeah. I don't want to know the question ahead of time. I enjoy the challenge of a question like Stephen Watson's where I sit here and I'm like, okay, I've mm -hmm. got to really think. And it keeps my brain chugging. And if you want to come on live like yeah. Stephen did, let me know. I can set that up. I, I mean, I can tell you when we're going to be recording next and we can set that up. It'll be a lot of fun. I expect over time we will dial in a better process for this and mm -hmm. we can let people know when we're going. We're just not there yet. Yeah. Right? Like this is our third time doing this live. Yep. Yep. And I, I mean, it takes time. We could tell them when our next recording will be. I know when it'll be. Okay. Go ahead and tell them. Exactly a month from today, March 22nd. Okay. March 22nd, probably 11, 11 30 ish Eastern time. Yep. When's daylight savings? I don't know. Hey, Google, when's Daylight Savings Time? In Vermont, Daylight Savings Time will start on Sunday, March 13th at around 2 a.m. and will end on Sunday, November 6th at around 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay, March 13th. Quiet. March 13th. So those of you that are in other countries, yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, it affects you. But anyway, March 22nd. Because this episode will, I mean, right now it's airing live, but yeah. it will be released in the podcast feed before March 22nd. It will. So March 22nd, we will do uh, another recording. So you can come on live and ask your question question live. Kind That'd be fun. awesome. Uh, the last thing coming through the chat here, Dennis has a problem with the fact that it's a blue gear bag. Because um, if he and Stacey A both buy them, then they won't know who's is who's at all in weekend. I, I suspect they will be able to figure that out. Put a tag or something on it. Or, you know. Put your name on it. Yeah. Or open it. Look inside. You okay. could embroider it. Sure. You could put some put a, put some duct tape on it. Yeah, put a little tag. Think of all the things that people do to differentiate the black suitcases that yeah. fly 100 per plane every day. I tie a piece of tartan ribbon on mine. Something. Yeah. You got to do something. There we go. All right. Thanks for coming by. Remember, patreon.com slash whistlekick, whistlekick.com slash family. Podcast 1-5 to save 15% on something like that bag or anything else at whistlekick.com. We have training programs. All in weekend. Mm -hmm. Free training day. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. At Whistlekick. 
Yep. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew at whistlekick martial arts radio.com. First cup. Books. Family. Family. I said family. Did you? Okay. Books on Amazon and Audible. There we go. <laughs> Until next time. Train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.